Welcome Eco Penny viewers to another Eco Sports episode. This time we're going to be alpine touring, which is similar to cross country skiing, as we'll see in a minute. So I'm parked at the Perisher car park. I've just got to walk to the Nordic Trail Centre. I'm just going to fix up my gear at the Nordic Shelter at Perisher. Nice little room here, you can have lunch or set up your gear before you head out. So it's important to let someone know where you're going. I've got a radio, phone and a PLB. Always bring good gear, even if it's sunny. I'm still going to bring a warmth layer and good gloves and all that sort of thing. The trails are free to use, but it's always good to give a donation to the Nordic Shelter. So these are what are called alpine touring or AT bindings. So you can use them for downhill normal skiing or you can unclip the heel for walking in them. Just use your pole to move that little lever backwards. Next thing with downhill skis, they're too slidey. So we need to put what's called skins on them which allow the ski to move forwards but not backwards. So just want to hook the front of it over the tip. And just stick underneath the ski. Take the backing off. Got to make sure the ski is free of snow. Hard to do it one-handed. You just want to clip the back in like that. So these have been specially cut for these summits. So the basic concept is the ski can slide but not go backwards. So you can slide front to back but not the other way it's quite rough. So the skis slide forwards but there's a resistance going back so it stops you sliding back, back down the hill beautiful day it's time to get going so I'll start off easy with the 2.5 kilometer butter scotch bills trail so yeah, there'll be signposts to follow so just keep following the signs so the white ones are 2.5 k's those groomed little groove tracks there are for skinny cross-country skis so I've got to stay on this flatter part because my skis are wider and if you're walking it's important to walk on the edge of the trail so you're not wrecking the snow for the skiers I've done a warm-up now so I'm going to go up the valley trail just a beautiful bluebird sunny day today at Perisher so a lot of the downhill skiers have no idea got these Nordic trails as well you can do you got to earn your turns though there's no lifts it's all walking but it's more eco-friendly because you're not using electricity and diesel and other fuels to power all the chair lifts and all the infrastructure here just got a little bit of diesel with the groomers grooming the track but um the actual skiing it's all people power it's walking much better than working. Nice to be on holidays at the snow. We've got people doing lessons, they're just learning, learning the basics before they hit the trails. And there's Parrish's front valley with a V8 eight seater chairlift in front. And there's a half pipe there for the adventurous ones. So the cross country skiers going uphill can go in a v-shape to skate up the hill to go a bit faster so 
have a pair of shakar packs almost full now. Got to get here early if you want to park and go skiing or boarding or cross country or whatever. Just got my bits up there. So it's for climbing hills. It makes it a bit easier on your legs. Bit of a hill coming up in front now. So I'm sticking to the yellow arrows following the valley trail. Just a little thing if you're crossing cross country ski tracks, don't go through them. Just step your skis over like that. So the skins work really well. I'm on a hill, I can go forwards, but they don't slide back. Just magic today, it's beautiful. So even though it's sunny, I've still got a warmth layer, picket gloves, phone, personal locator beacon, all that safety gear, just in case the weather changes. Just gonna click these bits down now. So for normal walking, they go facing forwards like that. So binding moves on top. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else today, it's so good. Just magic weather. Beautiful snow conditions for late August in Australia. So with Alpine touring and cross country, you want to sort of glide with every step. So not simply walking, you walk and glide. Walk and glide. And that way you're going a little bit further for not much extra effort. Glide, 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 glide. So it's important to keep out for the signs. So the orange Carl's link goes there with the poles of the orange markers. And I'm going straight ahead, following the yellow triangles on the poles. And it's still sunny, yay! So that yellow trail just gets you onto the main trails. So I'm going to do the white one now, which is the easiest one. So I've got to follow the whites from now on. Glide, glide, glide. This is a turn off for the easy loop. What the heck, the weather's fine, I'm going to keep going along. So I'm going to follow the blue 5k loop now. The easy route turns off to the right to go back to the shelter. Following the blue arrows. Still following the blue trail. The red 10k just turned off to the left. And I might either do the blue or the green. I'll see how I feel. Beautiful weather, but it is hard work walking. Another decision point. The 5k track goes to the right. And seven and a half K goes to the left. What do you think EK Penny viewers? Shall I do the longer one? Yeah, I'll do the seven and a half K because the weather's quite nice. I've only been going for an hour so far. Because I aim to be finished at lunch. My next adventure's in Talbingo this afternoon. So I've only got the morning. So I'll do the, the green ones now. So I've got to remember to follow the green. We're going to have some morning tea in a little while. There's the green arrow. So it's very important to stick to the poles. If the weather's bad, you've got to make sure you can see the next pole before you leave the pole that you're on. So you've got to go from pole to pole if there's poor visibility. If you can't see the next pole, you basically got to turn around and go back because you can get lost very, very easily if it's poor visibility. But it's not a problem today. Doing this alpine touring, you're away from the ski resort, away from the crowds, back to nature. It's beautiful. I've got my ordinary downhill boots. 
but I've just set them a little bit loose so I haven't got them really tight for downhill they're still on but they're buckled quite loosely as I said it's just so beautiful today awesome weather awesome snow can't wipe the grin off my face sticking to the green poles green arrows so most of these trees here are snow gums they're very slow growing because it's an alpine environment some of them have been burnt by bushfires so all the grey ones are dead all the ones with leaves are alive a little bit of downhill coming up So the 10k loop loops out for a bit and then joins back onto this trail here. So back to following green and the red. I think it's time for morning tea so I'll just find a spot where I can stop in a minute. That's where I started from here. Did a little bit around near the Nordic shelter, went up this valley trail. Started on the 2.5k wipe. Here I branched off and did the blue. Here I branched off and did the 7.5k green. So I'm here now at Prussian Flat. So there is a, a link to my left here. That goes off to Porcupine Rocks, which I've snowshoed to in previous years. Oh. I'm not going to be too adventurous so I'm just going to continue back on this green and back to the start but it's so as I said even though the weather's really good I've got a warmth layer jacket that can go under my ski jacket if it gets colder I've got thick gloves I've got beanie goggles all that gear it looks like a lot of gear but um, you do need it in case the weather changes in the snow. Oh, look at this stash. I've got muesli bar, banana, apple, chocolate. Mm. So it's important to hydrate, drink plenty of water, even if it's not that sunny. And also have plenty to eat. It uses a lot of energy when you're out in the snow. It's not a bad spot for morning tea at all. Don't forget to take your rubbish out with you. Don't litter in the snow. I think this National Park area pristine. So I'll just show the mechanism a bit more. When you're normally walking, it's down like that. If you're going up hills, it's up like that, just to make you easier on your legs. If you want a downhill ski, click that out of the way. And this locks down on these little pegs here and to unlock it use your pole to move this bit back towards the tail of the ski and that unlocks these here put that down for normal walking great great <laughs> idea these bindings so combines downhill use with a bit of alpine touring cross-country style walking. That's right. <laughs> nice going downhill. <laughs> nice going down the hill. <laughs> so 
taking the downhill descent. Oh, this is a life. So you can alpine tour up to the top of the big mountain, take the skins off, lock the bindings, and then ski all the way down. That's sort of the main advantage to these ones. The ski cross-country skis, they go a bit faster on this sort of terrain, but you're limited to this sort of terrain. You can't do any steep downhill. Oh, I can see the shelter. There's a Nordic shelter down there. I don't know if you can see it, I've done seven kilometers on the Fitbit watch. That's about it from up today. Back to the shelter for lunch. See the shelter. Nearly had a stack there. <laughs> 